Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to model surfaces in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on creating surfaces using a grid. So we'll be able to use our graphical surface tools that we used in the previous video, but you'll also learn how to create your own custom UCS and your construction grids for your model. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the area of the model that I'm working on. When we're working on a three-dimensional building structure that has lots of members and nodes, this could help to make sure you're clicking in the right areas. So for this particular model, I already created some groups. And to select my groups, I'm going to go to the Data tab and the Ribbon Toolbar, and then click on the Groups icon. Now the goal of this exercise is basically to create some surfaces that are going to define my elevator shaft. So I'm going to grab my elevator members and click Select and close out of here. And I'm also going to isolate this area of the model by clicking on the selected objects only. This will basically be a partial view mode and I'm gonna spin a little bit so everything's not on top of each other. Now that I've done that, I'm ready to start my process for creating a custom grid. Now, this is going to start with creating a custom coordinate system. So STAD Pro allows you to use multiple coordinate systems or UCS within the same model. An initial UCS is created by default in each model and it will be set at the global origin with no rotation. Now that's not going to be the origin of where I'm entering my grid system and that's why I'm going to create my own UCS which will define the origin of my grid. So let's go ahead and get started. So to create a UCS. I'm going to go to my model tab and my ribbon toolbar and click on the create UCS icon. Here I can name it anything I want. I'm going to call mine elevator and I can align it to either a WCS world coordinate system or by three points. I'm going to use the world coordinate system. Now, where is the origin of my UCS? I'm going to say X is 60 feet, the Y is at zero, and the Z is at zero. I can also enter a position angle. Now, as you work within the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, you're going to notice that several of the dialogues have this option here to show help. So if you need any information on any of the variables that you enter in the dialog, you can see that information here to give yourself more insight on how to enter these parameters correctly. I'm going to finish this off by clicking OK, and I'm going to see my new UCS point has been added. Now at this point, I'm ready to create my grid. To create your grid, we're going to go to the Model tab and the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Create Grid icon. We can name our grid. I'll call mine Elevator Grid. And we can enter a coordinate system. So WCS, that is the official default UCS that is provided at the origin of your model. That would be at 000. Or you can select your custom UCS, which for me, that's what I'm going to pick. Next, we're going to enter a plane. Do we want vertical, horizontal? Which plane if we do want a vertical plane? I'm going to go with the YZ plane. And then I'm going to create my grid spaces. Now I can create them by spacing, which means how many grids, what's their spacing in each direction. That'll be a uniform spacing. I could enter by length or I can enter a custom. So if you have an irregular grid, you have the ability to do that as well. I'm going to keep it by spacing and then I'm going to enter the number of grids in both the Y and Z direction. In the Y direction, I'm going to create nine grids and those grids are going to be four feet apart. In the Z direction, I'm going to create five grids. Now, what's important to know is where the positive Z is. I actually want my grid to go in the negative Z direction. So I'm actually going to give my grid spacing a negative value. I'm going to say negative two feet because that's where I want my, my grids to start. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK. And then here's my new grid system. Now this will give me snapping points to use any of my modeling tools that are basically creating model elements graphically. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with that. 
To create a surface graphically, I'm going to go to the Model tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Create Surface icon. Let's go ahead and start with our first node. I'm going to start in the upper left-hand corner of my grid system. Then I'm going to click on my second node. I'm going to click at the base of this column. And I'm going to come down and basically go to the origin of my grid system. Again, to finish off this process, I'm going to double click at my starting node. Now what you're going to see is that the program added a surface where I asked for one to be. If there was not a node present, it went ahead and created a node there. A node will be created at basically any point you click when you're creating your surface. Let's go ahead and now we're going to use these nodes to create one in the perpendicular wall. So I'm going to start at this first node click over. And again, you just want to make sure that all of your nodes are in the same plane to avoid any warped surfaces. And you do want to go in consecutive order around the perimeter. Now, when we're done with an active modeling mode, we're going to hit the escape key to cancel out that process. And let's go ahead and turn the rest of our model back on. We can go to the view tab in the ribbon toolbar and we'll unselect the view selected objects only. Now, if you're done with your grid and you don't want to show it anymore, you can also choose to turn off your grid and turn off your new UCS. Now, those are available to turn back on. They're still in your model, but it might be easier while you're working on other processes to go ahead and turn them off if you'd like. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.